Sorry about that. I touched a button and inadvertently I cut myself off. I don't know yet how to paste two pieces together. I was talking about Nate in the last in my first video. Nate is a another company that's also it's a transportation part a ship transportation a tanker transportation company and they were giving a, a decent dividend now they cut the dividend that's what they were doing a better dividend so what you need to do is constantly scour for which companies are actually paying dividends which ones are suspending dividends about to suspend dividends yeah, the cost of the stock varies from minute to minute sometimes, day to day, whatever. A lot of people want to buy a share of stock at $8 and sell it when it's um, $16 or $85 or something like that. If you commit yourself and you become what they have as a day trader where you can buy stocks and sell stocks and take the gains... That's an okay strategy. That's not the strategy that I'm using right now. The strategy that I'm using right now is buy and hold. It's a more conservative strategy. Uh, the reason I sold out the other stock, the stock that was um, frontline was because they suspended a dividend. That was a surprise to me. What was happening in the tanker industry at one time was because of the pen because of a pandemic they have decided that it was in their best interests for companies that were producing oil to stay to sh put them on tankers and rent the tankers as a storage facility at that time when they were doing that type of stuff then they were paying huge amounts daily to store their oil because there was nowhere to put it then uh, some of the oil started trickling out and they emptied some of the tankers, I suppose. And so they no longer uh, wanted the tankers for transportation. They just used up what oil was on the tankers and then stopped using the tankers. So then the company decided, Frontline decided to not pay dividends, even though they, had to, they were flush with cash. And they, I, I suppose they cut the dividend to an unrealistic level for me, but I'll take whatever dividends. I only I already hold the stock, so. Uh, another thing that I look at every day is if a stock that I own goes down in value, if it's on sale, I'll buy it. That usually increases the dividend if, the main, if they can maintain their dividend. It has to be a constant, it's the second job for you. If you own, if you have a, a first job, like a, if you're a hamburger flipper, or if you're in retail sales, or if you do any kind of work, it doesn't matter, a janitor. I've been a janitor. I was in retail recently. Um, I'm getting into direct uh, marketing for um, a company that's a freight company. So I'm going to be doing, you know, eventually I'll be helping truckers find loads and selling, getting a per percentage of the load, the monetary value. But that's about all I want to discuss about me. But for you, you could take, if you're a hamburger flipper, like I used to be a hamburger flipper, at one time I worked for McDonald's, at another time I worked at Burger King. I've worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken for six years. I've done... Walmart for seven years. I've done a lot of different things in my life. Worked for a lot of different companies. I was in document storage for a while. Uh, most recently, after Walmart, I did another job that was retail. If people intend to purchase stock, that's a good thing. But a lot of people once they accumulate 40, 50, 60, 70,000, 80,000 in stock, then they find a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a significant other and they sell their stock and they just pour the money on and then they go broke again. Don't do that. If you choose to purchase stock, it's my advice. Well, you have to talk to your broker. If he thinks it's a good idea for you to sell all your stock and become broke again, that's between you and your financial advisor. 
I always want to do a buy and hold scenario. So if I buy and hold a lot of stock, I will start building up a monthly income. It's okay if you, for instance, Hawaiian Electric paid certain months, okay? There was another company that was called Spectra at the time. It paid a different time. You want, if you buy quarterly stocks, you can still buy quarterly stocks and have monthly income. You just need to start with three stocks that are quarterly that have different payout days. Say Hawaiian Electric does on one month and then uh, another electric company on another month and another electric company on another month. That's a good strategy. A better strategy that I've been using, well, because I bought two, uh, I've, I own both monthly and quarterly. So I want to load up on the quarterly and the monthly, but right now I want to get more on a monthly basis. When you get paid on quarterly, when you get the dividend of the one stock on quarterly, one of the things I like to do is purchase another stock before the cutoff date and then get a second dividend. So it sort of compounds it. So I'm going to be going over all the different stocks that I like, but not today. Uh, uh, you have to come up with your own personal strategy. I'm going to show you the strategy that I'm using, and I'm going to walk you through it. But the stock channel, this channel for stocks, is going to be teaching you only what I know. Now, if I ever have a guest on, they may talk about what they know. I know what I know, and I know what has worked. At times, if I needed to sell some stock to have money, I did. I had a problem. I have, um, I like dogs and puppies. And one of the things I had to do was sell some stock for an emergency to take care of my dogs. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you how you can amass what I've amassed. If not, if I show you how to accumulate $80,000 in stock, as I have done in the past, or $40,000, or whatever it was, you can do the same. You can amass any amount of money in stock, but you have to live. One important thing is live below your means. Live below your means. Don't be in the biggest house that you can afford. Don't spend most of your money. Now, later, when you have 100%, the goal should be, I don't know what your goal is, my goal is 100% passive income. Income that I can have, whether I work or not. I'm not there yet. If you can cover every single one of your bills with dividend stocks, or even if you bought real estate or something else, as long as the income is passive, your passive income should pay your bills. Then you're free, you're financially free. After that, you can think about going to Tahiti and stuff like that when you create, when you harvest enough wealth. I like to call it harvesting, getting wealth. I don't see it as creating wealth because the wealth is already there. You just have to go get it, in my opinion. That's my opinion. So I'm going to show you certain stocks that I personally like, but not on this video. So I would suggest that you hit like and subscribe if you want to learn what I know about stocks. The other channel, who on earth is on the other channel? I'm here to help me explain to you what I've done with stocks and what you can do with stocks. If I bought 10 shares of Hawaiian Electric and you can afford to buy 100 shares or 1,000 shares, you can beat me by 10 or 100 times. If I tell you the stocks that I bought and how many I've bought and you do 10 or 15 times that, then you can get 10 or 15 times the results. If I say I like this particular stock and it's only trading at three or four or five dollars and you buy shares of that stock. The thing with Robin Hood and Webull is you don't have to buy whole shares. You can buy partial shares with those. When you use a broker, they only deal in whole shares. When you use Wells Fargo or Chase, I believe they only deal in whole shares. I've only been able to buy whole shares with my Wells Fargo account. But you can do exactly what I'm doing also. 
and you can have the same or better results depending on how much you purchase. Hawaiian Electric was one was my favorite stock for a long time. I loved that stock. It wasn't paying that much of a dividend, but I loved it because it was one of my first ones that I decided to do with the drip. You can either buy drip or you can go on Weeble and buy with it or Stash or TD Ameritrade app. You could use Vanguard. I wouldn't use Vanguard anymore. I wouldn't suggest Vanguard. They just keep. I was. It's too many. The other problem I've had with my my dealings with Vanguard is it takes so long to talk to somebody. I'm on hold for 30, 40, 50 minutes to talk to somebody. Oh, you can press a button and have them call you back. That's sure. But I want to talk to somebody as soon as possible. So when I want to ask, well, how come this dividend wasn't what I thought it was going to be? And it's like 40, 50 minutes come to find out that. The stock itself purchased more of the share. It divided the dividend and didn't tell me it was going to divide the dividend. So part of it went into cash and part of it was reinvestment in the same stock. I would have bought some more of this stock anyway. So a lot of, a lot of stocks will let you reinvest the dividends. Now, if you're a young person and you're in your 20s or 30s or whatever your age is, say you're 30 years old, 34 years old, 36 years old doesn't matter how old you are. I wouldn't want to st start purchasing stocks at 75 and waiting till I'm 95 to start seeing the reaping the benefits. When you're young and you're doing all this overtime, forget partying, put your money. I would highly suggest that you would think about putting your money, something that will help the future you. Now you don't have to talk to your financial advisor. Some people put 10% of their money, of their income into stocks. Some, I think the Japanese were doing 17% at one point. You need to put yourself first and buy shares of whatever you want to do. Now, if you want to get into real estate, that's not this channel, but you can get into real estate. If you want to get into a multi-level network marketing business, that's good too. That'll bring you in some money. If you start making $10,000 a month in network marketing, you can take one or two, three thousand of that and purchase either real estate or start purchasing stock. I'll show you the stocks that I deal with and then you can de deal with them or not deal with them. You can follow my suggestions or not, but it's always best to have a financial advisor, someone that knows more than you do. I personally like the book Richest Man in Babylon. One of the five rules of gold is to find out somebody that knows about what you're interested in and then use their knowledge while investing in something. Like if you're interested in real estate, you need to deal with people who know about real estate. If you want to buy, uh, are interested in purchasing stocks, you need to find someone who purchases stock. Not per a broker can only help you so much. If the broker doesn't have two or three or four million dollars in stock of their own, why would you listen to them? Now, if there's a person that you know that's got $50 million, as, uh, he's got a $50 million net worth and, all, uh, and it's all in stock, that $50 million in stock, that person knows about stock. Ask them about stock. Post your com comments as much as you want. Uh, I'm not opposed at uh, people who want to tell me stuff that they have experienced themselves. People say you can lose your shirt in stock market. You can also get a fur coat in a stock if you purchase right. Now, a lot of people don't like fur coats. I'm just using that as an example. It's a, to me, it's an extremely expensive piece of clothing to compare against losing your shirt. If you don't want a mink coat because you don't want to hurt little minks, okay. Well, then buy one of those Versace or whatever it is. Well, one of those $13,000 dresses or whatever they are. When you make it, you make it. So all as I want to say, see, uh, the Irish guy, well, on the other channel the, that I've been borrowed from, they would say stuff like, Live long and prosper. I think I'll go with that one. Two. 
Live long and prosper because I want you to prosper. And I also want for God to bless America. So God bless America. And have a jolly good day.